We would like to welcome Nick Hardy here to the Media Center at the John Deere Classic. Nick, you'll be making your third tournament appearance and first since 2018. What's it like to be back here, especially as a hometown event type feel? Yeah, and uh, as a PJ Tour member, it's definitely uh, a lot nicer. So I'm just excited to be back here. This is my favorite event of the year for me. Um, Claire giving me two two spots here um, as a senior at, at Illinois, and then as my year out, you know first year out. I mean, it means the world to me, and I gained a lot of good experience from playing those two events, um, those two years, and uh, making the cut both weekends. Just you know, added more experience. So. Um, very special to be to, to be here. You touched upon, but can you speak about the importance and significance of Claire extending those sponsor exemptions, especially uh, on the receiving side? Yeah, I mean, he does an amazing job with them year in, year out. Um, I think he usually gives them to a lot of very well-deserving college, you know, young up-and-coming players, and um, I was just fortunate to be one of them for two years straight, which is really uh, amazing. And so... Um, definitely forever indebted for, um, for that. Can we expect to see a lot of family and friends out here at the course yeah, this week? Yeah, for sure. I hope so, especially, you know, my immediate family will be here, my three sisters and um, mom and dad, I'm pretty sure will be here. So um, looking forward to that for sure. And um, on quite the stretch, your fourth consecutive, consecutive event, I think, this week, but um, coming off a career best top 10 last week. So how's your game feeling entering the week? Yeah, I'm very confident. Um, I felt that way ever since uh, my first event back in the Corn Ferry Tour about a month ago. Um, played great golf at home in uh, near Northbrook, and uh, ever since then, I've just felt um, really easy, no thoughts. Um, I think that break off for me really helped me kind of slow my mind down and uh, get my confidence back. And wrist feels fully great since then. Yeah, no no problems with the wrist. I feel. Uh, pretty much 100% healthy and um, no issues, no flare-ups, so very fortunate for that too. What confidence will you take from last week at Travelers entering this week? I think um, mainly just building on what I've built on for like a month now. I think uh, I'm really excited about um, the rest of the summer. I think as long as I keep doing what I'm doing with uh, all my, you know, I think I've grown a lot as a, as a pro golfer so far this year just like every year I've been a pro, but um, I think if I just keep on building on what I've built on, is I'll keep going up. Perfect. With that, we'll see if the media has any questions, and we will get a microphone over to you. Start up here in the front. What, talk about the specifics. What have you learned? What has changed in your game? Comfortability level out on tour now. What, what is the difference between Nick Hardy now and, and a year ago? Yes, that's a great question. I think um, just way more patient. Um, you know, I think when you, when I got my PGA Tour card, I was definitely confident as a player and comfortable out here just from having a lot of experience prior to being a member out here. Um, but there's a difference. It's hard when you're a rookie because, you know, I only got four, four starts in the fall. So you're already kind of feeling the pressure to get off to a good start and – um, on top of that, I wasn't in the best frame of mind in my game for the, the last fall and the last end of last summer. Um, so I think I just added a little stress and importance to uh, my start. And I mean, I didn't get off to a terrible start, but I only had four events in the fall. And um, I believe I played okay in two of them, but it wasn't enough to like make me feel comfortable about the reshuffles. And then the West Coast comes around and I just didn't didn't play my best golf on the West Coast either. And so, you know, I was kind of off to, you know, just just behind. And um, I think I was just pressing a little bit without even realizing it. Um, and I think it just it just kind of added a little little bit to me, to my just the way I carried myself. Um, normally I'm a, a little calmer, a little more relaxed than I was, I think. I didn't realize it, but um, I think what made me realize it was that time off and – having to be forced away from the game for a month really just I wasn't thinking about the game I wasn't thinking I I wasn't no there's was no bad thoughts there was no good thoughts but there's no bad thoughts either so um it just made me kind of um just relax and uh I think I just was able to find my confidence again once I touched the club again is 
Is there, are you feeling some pressure? Uh, as you know, you say you were felt like you were behind. Mm -hmm. Is there pressure now moving forward to have success out here? Keep that card. Keep moving. Keep the career moving forward. Yeah, the, of course. There's always pressure. I mean, no matter where I'm at in my career, there's just as much pressure on myself. You know, it's, and, uh, the pressure that I feel is only self-inflicted. It's not. Not. I've never had external pressure affect me. It's always self-inflicted, and so. Um, I would say the pressure that I put on myself is the same as it was when I was in 2018, when, when I had no status, and when I in 2019 when I'm you know had no status from failing at Q school. Like the, the pressure is the same, um, but yeah, like it's the challenge is harder because I'm in a different spot where like you know getting a corn ferry tour card is not as well. It's a little easier than keeping your card on the PGA tour. So I'm definitely in a spot that's more of a challenge, but that's something I'm proud of and I take pride in that. And it's the reason why I work, you know, really hard is to climb the ladder of professional golf and see how good I can be. And so, yes, of course, I feel pressure to um, perform well this summer and keep playing well. But I'm at a point in my game and in my career where I feel like I'm very matured and I feel like I am just ready for that challenge. What kicked in last week? And is that something that you can or hope to carry over this week? Yeah, nothing kicked in last week just because I feel like I just was building on what I've built on since I came back, which was, you know, amazing at that home event in the Corn Ferry Tour where I, you know, almost won in a playoff. Um, it was just I didn't have any expectations or any thoughts or any, you know, going into the event. I just wanted to win, and I, I didn't come away with a win, but I came away with kind of a process that was very successful that I've just tried to keep the same. Um, in terms of what I'm doing the week of, like um, what I'm what, what I'm resting, how I'm saving my energy during rounds, like how I'm breathing, how I'm eating, how I'm preparing, like all those things. If I can keep the same as possible, then I know I can kind of keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I just had one quick question. I imagine Zach's among them, but who are some of the guys that you kind of looked up to and and kind of model your attitude and game after out here on tour definitely zach johnson um he is uh we have the same agent so um that's definitely a relationship that i've had with zach for a while too um steve stricker went to illinois um good friends really good best friends with coach so that's always been something that you know a player that i've really admired out here um and of course tiger woods um that's he's really the, the the one golfer that's inspired me the most. Um, so those definitely those guys. What have you picked up from those three guys specifically? Yeah, um, mainly Tiger Woods because that's how I fell in love with golf. Is I never missed an interview of his, or I never missed a, literally a step he took on TV for twelve years when I was growing up. So I studied everything he did, um, and how he prepared, and how he trained, and how he you know got better and better and I think that's what's what I admired the most and uh, I think he taught me that you know what you're competing for is a lot more than just money it's for history it's for um, kind of winning you know so that's like and how to do it like that's it's that guy you know Nick um, you've before the uh, Travelers Championship, you, you had a great U.S. Open. How much confidence has that? Uh, what, what do you take away from, from yeah. a strong finish there? Yeah, U.S. Open, I, I felt like I um, was actually in a pretty good chance or a pretty good spot to win um, on Sunday. I was, I was only a few shots back after about six or seven holes, and uh, I had a bad eighth hole, but that kind of took me out of it. But um, I was in. Uh, I was definitely up there um, on the weekend, which was uh, obviously always a goal of mine. But it's the first time I've ever had that chance to win on the, let alone a major on a PGA Tour. So um, being in that spot late on Saturday and Sunday tee times, and um, just getting a feel for that was extremely motivating, and it really uh, is going to help me. Is just going on in my career for experience. You and Patrick Flavin both came up through the uh, Merritt uh, Junior program. Mm -hmm. What's it like seeing him out here? And, and um, uh, do you guys uh, have you guys played a practice round together? Or yeah, we're gonna play uh, nine holes in about 20 minutes. So yeah, 
Patrick and I are best buddies. We uh, both came through the Merit Club youth program, which was, which still is just one of the most amazing things that any club does in the country is um, give a, an amazing deal for young golfers that don't really – Really don't. I never had, but most golfers that don't have a place to play and practice every day. I was just a public golf um, course kind of growing up. I was grew up on Annettsburger Part 3 course and Sportsman's um, Country Club. And so it gave me a private place to practice that was amazing facilities. And they let me bring out my buddies for $20 to go play, which was incredible growing up. And Patrick was one of the buddies that I always played with. Um, and at the Merit Club growing up, we played countless times from when we were 15, 16, 17, all the way through college and high school and whatever. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's definitely special to me, the Merit Club. You guys got a little competition going on between yourselves? Uh, always. I mean, we, we push each other. Always have. I mean, I think it's gotten me better. I think it's gotten him better. Um, that's certain. Just we're both extremely high competitive people. And uh to have a friend that you know supports me and I support him like we do, I think it's really important as well. Kind of getting down to crunch time in the tour schedule right now. You're close to that 125 number on the FedEx Cup ranks. What are your goals for the rest of the year? How much are you planning on playing? Does that does that plan change depending upon success and where you are in FedEx Cup? Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I have I have discussions with my fiance Liz about my schedule. It's uh, it's tough to plan right now. I look because I know I got to play, but you also got to um, rest and make sure you're properly ready to play. Um, so that's important. And I know from experience on the Corn Ferry Tour, like you don't necessarily want to play nine or ten in a row, but sometimes you have to. And uh, I think I'm in a point in my career where I'm ready to if I need to in terms of how I handle myself now and how, how I am nutrition, how I rest, how I prepare throughout the week, I think it's better than it's ever been. So if I need to play that many, I will. Mm -hmm. Is that by making the FedEx Cup in the playoffs, is that a major goal? For oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, shoot, I've, I've done a lot of damage the last few weeks in terms of climbing that ladder to get there, but i am um, definitely still got a ways to go. Um, so that's a goal of mine to make the FedEx Cup playoffs, yeah. Put another chunk in it this week too, can't you? Yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. They give out 500 points to the winner, so you can. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice chunk. Yeah. Unless there are any others, I'm going to close with uh, going back with Patrick Flavin. You guys are named honorary ambassadors for First Tee Chicago. Is there uh, any birdie challenge going on? This yeah, week with that? I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, there is. Um, you can find the link at First Tee Chicago uh, website, but we are doing a birdie challenge to raise money for the First Tee of Chicago, and uh, hopefully we make a lot of birdies. <laughs> and final one, when's the wedding? Um, we, uh, we're, we're not, we haven't planned a wedding yet, but uh, we're going to do something in small in Australia, so no one's invited, just us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As always, thank you for taking the time for joining us, and good luck this week. Thank you.